Um, good evening, all. Welcome to Impossible Conversation. I'm your host, Suki, and my goal is to introduce you the ordinary people that are doing awesome things, inspiring you and me, others, to follow our dreams. Our Impossible Conversation is all about you and your story. Your story is unique and so, so different and not worthy of a comparison. John is originally from Mariport, Cumbria. He has spent nearly 10 years in Newcastle and runs his business, Advertise One. This is John's story. I'm going to bring John now to my live stream. Hello, John. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm literally just getting the post uh, like posted as I speak. Uh, uh -huh. Oh. Hello, sorry. Hello. Hi. Right. I just got this. I'm just posting mine right now. Uh, mm -hmm. There we go. I think I've sussed it. So, of course, uh, we just, uh, before we went live there, we just talked to technology to make sure yeah. that uh, both your friends list and mine. There we go. Yeah, I can see mm -hmm. it on mine now. So, Fantastic. I hope right. everyone's happy. Tonight's Impossible Conversation is all about John. Let's start. Tell no us about yourself, please. Okay, so uh, my name is uh, John, uh, goes as short as Jonathan, we've just been discussing that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes to John, John O, uh, Waity, uh, it, all, it depends on who it is that I know, depending on what name I get. Uh, originally from Maryport in Cumbria, which you were saying then before, I uh, moved to Newcastle in 2010. Uh, I studied at Northumbria University, um. uh, graduated in 2014, and then since then, I've um, lived in Newcastle um, since university. I've been 10 years in September since I moved. And uh, now I am the owner and founder of a freelance company called Advertise One, which uh, looks at small businesses and improve their online presence in-house. Uh, and then when I'm not focused on that, uh, I then have a various uh, hobbies and interests, um, which I uh, keep on top of uh, from time to time. Fantastic. Why Newcastle? Well, because, going back, mm -hmm. yeah, going back to 1999, uh, where I was first introduced to Newcastle, uh, when I got diagnosed with leukemia, uh, Whitehaven, which is the local hospital where, which is near mine, couldn't do anything, neighbor called Carlisle, uh, all the children cancers are all at the RVI, this is doing before the, the new children's hospital. So I spent three years uh, on and off traveling to and from the RVI. So I got to know the city then. Um, like a little fact to go in that uh, I think I was the first person to have a three year protocol for that hospital so mm -hmm. for my saw leukemia so it, then when it came to my UCAS uh, I had a few applications in place I looked at Preston and I, I didn't think much of the city uh, the uni done the course I couldn't get into Manchester but I did have in mind Manchester uh, for quite a while especially after visiting Manchester University for a year nine uh, like a summer school trip uh, for a few days, uh, couldn't get the grades for that. So then I looked at Northumbria, uh, looked at the, uh, went round the open day and loved it a bit. And I thought, right, you know what? Uh, I know Newcastle anyways. It's far mm -hmm. away uh, to say that I'm away from home, but not too far away to be able to get back quickly um, to see any friends and family. So, and the course as well was the sort of thing I was looking for. So that's when I decided to move up to Newcastle, which was back in September 2010. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're in Newcastle. So you mentioned about your Advertise One, mm -hmm. founder of Advertise One. Could you tell us about Advertise One a little bit more? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So Advertise One, it focuses on small businesses and it's to improve either their online presence or the way to do things in-house. So if we look at the more the products, uh, then you've got the website, you've got booking systems, uh, social media pages, uh business listings on google uh like the seo that sort of stuff there but that's the product side the services it's either like email host and web hosting uh it's a case where um i can then do jobs on behalf or even mm -hmm. uh, service level agreements where uh, customers can buy sort like half a day one day a week two days a week uh, for me to focus on them um 
like purely on whatever their needs are for that week uh, and then you've got the technical part which is training and uh, being able to give advice and the consultation part as well uh, especially looking at some of the customers you've got some which have a lot of time but don't have much money and especially when there's the newer businesses or starting up part-time on the side of the day job which that's how i came about um it's a case where they're building up slowly and with a bit of advice consultation they can then uh, move on to what they want to do you then got other companies which um, they're good at what to do, but they need someone to look at their uh, IT and the marketing side. That's where I come in, where it's a case, hi, John, uh, this is what I need um, for today or for as soon as you can. This, uh, can you give a hand? And if I don't know, then I've, with the networking, which I've done over the last few years, I've got people who I trust in who can then do stuff which I can't do. So, uh, but the majority of the stuff which I get asked, I can normally do myself anyways, which mm -hmm. uh, to me the advantage, because at least it's, it is my work, of course. Uh, being from the Lady District, uh, which I was saying before, uh, from Maryport, and being in Newcastle for 10 years, I've got to a bank of people, a bank of customers, and potential <laughs> customers in the future in both locations. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that I can uh, go between the two. How, how easy or how hard is it to start business? Ooh. like especially in Newcastle I think in Newcastle it is quite easy and there is a hub of people who's doing uh start up businesses some are doing like myself the agency and they're looking at uh many customers where some are uh software or a product where they're just focusing on that now mm -hmm. it is quite easy to start up in Newcastle because you the two big things that you've got around Newcastle is you've got a startup community network and so if it's events like Startup Week, Founders Friday, uh, like networking groups and uh, meetups, but then also in Newcastle in general, people are willing to talk to each other, people are quite friendly. So mm -hmm. that side of stuff, uh, you can get to know what is in the area and people are willing to uh, speak to you and tell you what they're up to. I'm after to share people my story. The other side of it is you've got uh, buildings across Newcastle and Gateshead where you can collaborate, which I'm an import or now. Uh, this is actually my office, which I've only just got at the beginning of the month. We've been trialing for a month now, which mm -hmm. uh, this is the first time I mentioned it to the public. There will be an announcement made at some point this week about it. So if you listen to this, uh, you're hearing it first. Uh, before that, I was next door in the shared area. I was in there for just over a year. Uh, you've got the likes of Trust Park, which are, they also do uh, dedicated desk and hot desk and you've got uh, the NatWest which is a incubator and a hub uh, and you've got uh, other places which are popping up across Newcastle as well uh, in the Usburn area you've got Vegas uh, so it's a case of getting out the house uh, that makes starting with a business really easy on a professional front but also as well for my mental well-being is home's home and work's work so when I'm at home I try not to think mm -hmm. of work unless it's something that's really urgent Mm -hmm. um, I purposely try and come to Pro or to do as much work as I can. Or alternatively, if I'm working in Cumbria, um, I will work from my bedroom over at my parents' house in Maryport. Mm -hmm. How easy was it to transition from your full time work to become a founder and a business owner? It wasn't too bad for me because I already started doing it part time. So mm -hmm. I started off five, it would be five years in April since I came up with the idea and I'm doing it at low key for very close friends and family. Uh, 2017, mm -hmm. I then registered for self employed. And in the end of 2018, I decided to go full time. So going back to that transition, uh, I started to get busier and busier on my part time. I started to get more work uh, like on the evening and weekends. Uh, I realised I could then get a startup loan from uh, Transmit, which are based next door in the North Design Centre. And it's a case where I thought, right, I've got the buffer. I know what I need to do. I made me built up my contacts over the start of the week a few months prior and asked the questions which I need to know. And then decided, right, I'm going to make the switch. And I knew it was going to be either late 18 or, uh, or early 2019 at the latest. So it happened it was in... Uh, end of September, beginning of October 2018, when I done it. The only difference is, of course, um, you're not getting a wage anymore. Uh, and that's the hardest thing is, you're not getting paid on the last day of the month. Uh, it's whatever that you get 
from the customers and some customers are good at paying on time or you know the certain customers pay on a certain day there's somewhere they either pay the next day or you mm-hmm. could be waiting waiting months so that is the hardest transition uh, for me um i was quite good at focusing on the actual work and uh, I, because i was on my own i could just keep noting my email and uh, use my calendar and that works really well as time's gone on i've got better systems in place to track the organization uh, of my work so then when people come on board in the future which looks like it is going to happen uh 40 years out there's the collaboration tools in place ready for that so you mentioned you are bringing um is it work placements or apprenticeship yes so provide, going to be employee yes yeah, so touch how exciting is that it is and mm-hmm. funny enough, i got approached for that i was uh, mm-hmm. a few weeks ago i was having a discussion with my mom at the time and i said it's getting to the point now where it's not that I'm not good at what I do. There's just that much to do some days where uh-huh. uh, there's someone disappointed because I've took a bit long with them because something else has came uh, in front because it requires more attention. I've got to make that decision uh, more than once in a day of what is actually a priority. So as I was thinking this, literally a couple of days later, I got an email saying, oh, I found you. Uh, I can't even remember exactly where. It probably was Facebook or the internet or whichever. Uh-huh. Um uh, I'm I'm looking to do a placement um, uh, for a six weeks uh, unpaid internship. So I got I said right, let's organise a call and we'll have a chat. And it turns out to me that uh, she's uh, from uh, the Leeds area. She studies at Salford University and she was looking mm-hmm. for public relations and photography placement initially. However, she then turned around and said, well, I'm perfectly coming up to Newcastle because her boyfriend lives in the area. Uh, in the Bencham area, so it's not far from where I work. Mm -hmm. And it's a case where uh, she wants to do something slightly different to what she learned at uni and try somewhere different to Leeds and Manchester. Mm -hmm. So I said, right, well, what's the date that you want to start? Looked at the, the looked and said, yeah, that's fine. And so she's going to start next week. And I've organized a few things where uh, we mix enough, um, like what actually happened in the office and also uh, show her like what ha- like the industry like the network and the events side whatever mm-hmm. events are left at the minute because i know there's been that many cancelled in the last week due to uh, the coronavirus which everyone is aware about but uh, the idea is she's going to see how a small business works where uh, every day is different and that um, there's a little bit of flexibility in what you do rather in comparison i should say to working in a big corporate mm-hmm. so when when is she going to start you must be really looking forward uh yeah so she'll start uh this time next week she will start uh-huh. uh i think the placements i'm running are between 10 and 4 uh monday to friday mm-hmm. but of course i think uh, looking at the calendar there'll be one day a week where uh i let her like work uh, remotely so if she wants to do photography i'll give her a task but it seems to be that four days a week uh she will be in the office uh that's going off like what uh like today's news now if it gets to a point where i have to like temporarily do it remotely then it also shows that especially in this sort of business which i'm do i can do myself Mm -hmm. um how can how can you operate a small business from anywhere which when i set up this company um, all the files are remote uh accessible i can access me pro or desktop from any internet connection the phone lines can be answered uh anywhere even the landlines um or collaboration to the online so it doesn't matter where i'm at uh, I, i've sometimes done the best work on on the train so that'll be also the other thing that i'm going to show is that you don't have to be in the same place to be able to do what you're good at you've got that freedom as long yeah. as you've got internet yes well yeah That's and good. it just showed that i just been to liverpool uh mm-hmm. this weekend which this is kind of why uh the show got delayed till today rather than yesterday but also going there and coming back as you've just said there having that connection i worked on my laptop on the journey mm-hmm. uh there and the journey back which it's six hours uh it was uh, if i say i worked half of it so even three hours just getting emails clean doing all the little tasks it's still mm-hmm. making a difference exactly yes so so that's what you do for business wise mm-hmm. Successful yeah, yeah. businessman. Uh, let's talk about you. What okay. are you 
put in the what's your hobbies okay well i'll put well when we uh, spoke before earlier uh the, the bio on my facebook info which is public as well uh loves a good live concert pub quizzes live comedy a gear pool and some photography on the side so mm -hmm. if we go to the live concert we'll go in in the order that i've said it uh normally i have a concert about once a month and so far that sounds about right i've had a concert in uh january about two in feb uh actually this month is a bit of a miss but then i've got one in april may june july so it tends to be that i have one a month on average um mm -hmm. and some of them are in newcastle uh sometimes i've got friends that come with me some of them i go on my own especially with the back of here because i'm engaged mm -hmm. at the minute uh, it is quite handy to get there who's near in my house uh or i'll travel on the megabus or the train down to places like uh, manchester leeds liverpool uh, they're the three I've done so far. They could be Glasgow at a later date um, and then go uh, on my own or with friends down mm -hmm. to them places yeah. to go to them. Yeah. You know, like that mega bus. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the like uh, the one who advertises it's a one pound. Is that right? That's right. Well, I've had one pound ever, yet. Have you ever had, have you ever managed to get that fare? I haven't got it like the one pound fare, but what I have done is uh, with Tesco Club Card, you get times three on the mega bus. So it moved that because I've like shopped at Tesco, I've got petrol at Tesco, I've got a credit card with Tesco, I accumulate the points quite quickly. Mm -hmm. So I convert eight pounds worth of token to 24 pounds mega bus. So it only mm -hmm. cost me like two pounds, three pounds, I think, for a return journey. And that's booking it two days before. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, because I'm just interested because when it says one pound mm -hmm. to travel from somewhere, it's just too good, isn't it? I think you can get to Middlesbrough for a pound, but for the likes of Leeds and Manchester still, you can easily do a return journey. Like that was with short notice, and I got it for about £30. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, if you book it in advance, you can. I know I've done Leeds for £10 very easy uh, by booking oh, right. it about a month in advance. All oh, right, okay. So we've been talking previously, you are interested in cycling, you mm -hmm. cycle a lot and then you love running and you've been doing lots of charity running and mm -hmm. you're interested in photography as well. Yeah, so if we go mm -hmm. to, the, let's go to the sport and let's go to the mm -hmm. uh, runner yeah. and the cycling. Now, uh, one, I've done the Great North Run three times. Uh, all the times I've raised money for the North Beach Children Cancer Research, NACCR, as it's shortly abbreviated that. And when I started raising money for them, uh, they were a very small charity at the time. Now, uh, they are quite mainstream where people know of them that do the popular Greg's sponsored char charity room, which is Gosworth Park uh, mm -hmm. in May. Uh, now, I've just been told today that that's been postponed, uh, and that's now 20th of September, with clashes with another charity show, which I do with the Time Theatre, but I'll go on about that in a minute. Um, so then I've been looking at the events, uh, the Carlisle Room, which is next year, there will be that charity room back again next year, but there's also the bike ride as well, either a nine mile or a 22 mile bike ride to raise money for them uh, in June. So I'm keeping an eye on that. Uh, I'm going to go and fix my bike because the geese haven't been great the last uh, 12 months or so. Um, I haven't really been on the bike that much since becoming self-employed, but then what mm -hmm. I have. Uh, before that, especially in the uni days, uh, I used to do a lot of uh, off-road mountain biking, uh, places like Hampsley uh, Forest in County Dura, I've done in the Leafy in the Edinburgh, I've done Wind Latter in the latest, so I used to do a lot of that. Uh, it's when I first, when I came off my bike at the end of first year at uni, uh, that's where I think when the gears haven't been great since, and of course I, uh, I, I think I twisted my arm where I couldn't lift it much further than about 45 degrees. Uh, and that lasted for about a month. So he put Quite me off. Cycling. Yeah, so he put me off yeah. going on, on my bike for a bit, but then I raised myself back into it. Uh, I've done park, uh, like uh, biking around parks, like uh, doing like bike paths and like road cycling, but with a mountain bike. So it's mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the things you can still do cross terrain, but being more simple. Uh, it's been a focus for a while to get the bike repaired and to do more of it. So now I know there's an event coming up. Uh, that I'm interested in, especially because of that date being moved uh, for the road. Instead, raise money for the same charity, but do it on a biking um, sort of um, idea. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and of course, especially uh, being the summer nights, 
And last year I was working a lot in Spain. I was doing like one week a month in Spain. So I was mm -hmm. traveling a lot uh, and also doing catch up at both ends to make sure all the other customers are fine. This year it's all about focus, uh, like being more stable with the company and to be able to be more profitable, but to like work less hours to have a better life balance. And mm -hmm. even then, so it's a uh, biking to work or having um having like uh, coming early, finish early, and then and enjoy biking along the quayside. Cause like I said, I'm not far from the quayside. Uh, mm -hmm. I live in Heaton, which is about three miles out of Newcastle, and it's not a bad bike ride to actually get back to Heaton. I know there's a, a few hills, especially more that side and this side, but it is a route that I can do uh, quite easy. Um, if we go back to the other stuff that I do for charity, which is, uh, I think sport is actually running around the time theatre on that show. Uh, I'll do a backstage on the day, but I am uh, coordinate the media, so like the flies, the posters, uh, and work with the um, show manager for the 2CC, uh, Two Children's Charities, it stands for uh, Time Theatre uh, show, which is always every September, and it's been running now for uh, a good few years mm -hmm. uh, to the point where even the volunteers are either time free the staff or ex time free the staff it's the same people that we've had uh, for a number of years uh, mm -hmm. the two charities that we raised money for with the both local one of them being mm -hmm. the time free to preservation trust and number one is dependent on the charity that we choose so this year it is Mabby Curie just for the simple fact that one of the main organizers last year who came up with the idea uh, on day one he passed away last year and he was in the Marie Curie hospice so that's the reason why that's the second charity so you're looking at the sports side of stuff there uh, which I enjoy but also raising money for uh, one of them charity because I've had leukemia I'm grieving back to children who's uh, suffering now or been suffering um, or is anyone in the future who could get the research has gone in and uh, mm -hmm. give it back to somewhere where I've already been uh, but then the other side of course is uh, with the charity show at the time free, it's something I've been involved in for about five years now, and it, that is also uh, that uh, that's teamwork, and it's 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 just nice that uh, that comes around every September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you mentioned about your love on country music that yes. you could, you travel quite a lot. Well, that's right, and I think that's only been uh, something in the last few years. Uh, mm -hmm. I started going to the Americana Summertime Music Festival, I think, which I think it'll be 2015 or 2016 was the first year I went to it. It hasn't been uh, that long. And with YouTube now and Spotify, it's quite good at giving recommended music and just have an autoplay on in the background while I've been working. I've, I've started to like it more and more and more. So I started going to the Americana, as I just said, which is uh, on the forecourt and inside the stage. Uh, on the Gator Key side, and then last year I uh, went to see um, a thing in Amsterdam or the Ziggo Dome. I went down to Liverpool and seen uh, a American uh, country singer. And I think by far that is still my favourite one to date. Uh, mm -hmm. When it comes to country ones, uh, I've been to uh, Stage One, Stage Two a few times, seen them. I've just been down to one which I've also really enjoyed uh, over in Manchester. It was in a little cafe. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I've actually been to quite a few, which I've got uh, one lined up on Easter Sunday. I've got one lined up uh, in the middle of May, uh, just before the Newcastle Startup Week. And I've also got some that I've got my eye on that I haven't booked yet, but they are penciled in. And I'm going to get to April, just uh, like get some money aside and also see what's happening uh, with events across the country. And if they're still running, I purposely got them all to sort out. It's a bit like a little Easter present for myself. Mm, yeah and then um, remember I was when I asked you what are we going to talk about you mentioned about the it's it's about the quality of your friends rather than a quantity can we yeah. go back to that one and mm -hmm. you mentioned about like secondary school friends and yeah some, so so yeah. let's if we go back to school where I come from a town where everyone knows everyone and everyone is quite friendly with each other, which is quite good for uh, like where I'm from. And especially when you go like out in the local town, it is uh, like people are like, oh, hi, John, how are you doing? Uh, hi, Jonathan, yeah. uh, haven't seen you for a while. It is it is quite nice when I go back there. Um, but then as time goes on, I think it was university. 
uh, when I first realised this. Uh, you finished university, uh, what people who you thought were going to stay uh, at university, really, uh, they haven't, uh, they've all, dis some have disappeared, they've gone up to new places, gone up to new things. Um, then you go into the job world where uh, you learn about how people are in the workplace. Uh, I tried moving back to company for a bit as well, 2015, where uh, I just couldn't find a job that I liked. I uh, had a break up at the time. I thought, oh, I'll move back to company. It's where I know people, but then realised, I thought, no, I'm a city boy. Uh, and so I moved back in July 15. So mm -hmm. as time's gone on, uh, you, you tend to learn like who your friends are who and who's close family, who it is that you could like say hello to in the street or in the pub or um, who would have a drink with to then comparison, who would you share more your secret stories with? And my friendship groups haven't really changed much in the last few years, uh, especially the people that I know in Cumbria, that's stayed very, uh, very strong and firm. And that hadn't changed a lot, I would say, since about 2016. Uh, around here in Newcastle, I think some of the people that I've met uh, through uh, running my business full time. Some of them are now my closest friends, but it's back to the point of what I'm saying is, uh, like I was saying to you before, especially in my lifestyle, uh, there's some weeks where I am around a lot and then some weeks I am quite busy. Uh, one of my close friends, uh, I'll even see him twice a week, twice a month, uh, twi uh, sorry, twice a week, sometimes twice a month, or as I was saying before, there was an instance last year, we went from Maybank holiday, the second one right up to the end of July, not only seeing each other two months, but yeah, we just left off where we were. So mm -hmm. back, to, back to the quote, which I gave at the start, um, you can't be everyone's cup of tea, otherwise you'll be a mug. Uh, it, it basically, it's a case of if you try and please everyone, it's going to happen. You are, you're either not, you're going to disagree or you're not going to be compatible with some people. Uh, you're best off being yourself and the ones who are there for you and are close will stand by you. And that is something... Uh, that I am very um, aware of now and it doesn't matter if um, people like decide that um, they're not compatible with you or don't particularly want to be your friend or don't want to work with you. So, okay. who, so it is. Um, who is friend then? Not like who is friend, like what's the quality of a friend? I think it's uh, uh, back to what I was saying before with um, my lifestyle is quite um, uh, sometimes quite busy, sometimes quite quiet. Uh, all of my mm -hmm. friends and family that are arm's length, uh, one of the qualities I have is if it's a case where you're constantly sitting over me, it ain't going to work. But if I know where you're at, and uh, especially if you're planning stuff in advance, or someone who knows like you as a person but then doesn't go and tell everyone uh, stuff that is to be kept secret, that is a quality on its own or understands where you're coming from as well. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've got some close friends in Maryport and uh, like I see them quite often. Um, I've got a handful of close friends in Keswick who I used to work with when I used to work in Keswick. Um, mm -hmm. uh, cause I, I used to go back every summer because there was more work in Cumbria than it was than it was around here, especially in uni days, but that worked great. Uh, the ones from Keswick, uh, it's a case where I'll we'll organise, I'll, I'll come to me and stay over, I'll stay over there. We'll have concerts, we all understand each other. Uh, we don't see each other often, but we, when we do, it's a good catch-up. And then the people that I know around here, uh, same, especially because I live here the most, uh, it's a case where it, I just don't feel like we have to constantly do stuff, just know that they're there if there is anything. And it's just, it just nice that you're not, on, you're not on your own. You've got people in different places. Well, I've got different friends uh, all into different things, but mm -hmm. we're all quite close. Yeah, but if you think about friends, it's not how many, how much time you spend, isn't it? No, it's it isn't. About, yeah, it's more about understanding and knowing each other. Mm -hmm. and I think um, that's definitely going back from the transition from mm -hmm. being a school and university to mm -hmm. then when you then uh, go into um, like like adult life. And back to if I'm going to go back to a point which I said before. Uh, one thing I've also learned as well, this is going back on the, in some respects, the quality and quantity. Uh, going back to the concerts, if I, I'm not going to force any of my friends to come with me just for the sake of having someone next to me. Uh, I'll go on my own. I'm happy because mm -hmm. I enjoy it and I'm happy to be in the presence of my own. And 
back to what you just said there it's understanding what people like what your friends are into uh, i know fine well i've got a handful of people that i trust with anything and then there's people that i know i can have a conversation with the dish that's different uh, I, can, I can talk to anyone i'm quite a friendly person but there's people that i know who would know um certain i would say secrets or more confidential stuff about me mm. and by yeah. the first i know stuff about them that's not public to the world mm -hmm. so how far do you go for your friends it's a case where uh, I, I just keep do, I just keep doing what I uh, like I normally do, and it's a case of if the friendship clicks, it clicks. It's not a case of um, like going to like friendship groups or like trying to get someone to be my friend. It just comes natural. You make any effort? <laughs> well, the case where it's a case uh, where like <laughs> it's a uh, if if you don't do that, um, that means you are just like waiting someone to be compatible to you, isn't it? I think it's a two-way thing. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. It's definitely uh, yeah. a two-way thing. And it's a more like, I am like meeting people in like the uh -huh. sort of stuff that I do, in the hobbies that I do, uh, uh -huh. from where I'm from, in the in my work environment. And you just, uh -huh. I can just know when some I'm going to get on with someone well, and then that's how the friendship grows. So yeah. anyone that kind of, that's you uh -huh. in my life, it's been anyone that I've met within the uh, small business uh, freelance industry. The people mm -hmm. that I've said about it come with people that I've uh, grew up school with or been on holidays with. And the fact that we've been away on holiday, we knew then that friendships were there. Or the fact where I make an effort to go back and see certain people and they got effort to see me. It's back to what I was saying before. I don't feel like we have to see each other, but it's good that people make effort on when it's like, oh, let's have a catch up. But then knowing the other side of it is when there's stuff um, and you need friends for like, that they're there for any reason you know that where they're at tell us more so you say that again <laughs> tell me more um so it's a case um i'm trying to if we go back uh i have talked about cumbia and we said about uh the people um who when i go back there i've got a small group on facebook and whatsapp saying right i'm coming back uh, who wants to have a catch up so that's like more a friendly side of stuff uh if it's a case where it's more like i've got some like questions and say like, oh i know someone to listen to that tends to be more on a one-to-one -one chat and i know which people it is that i would speak to uh, even i would say you can also put certain members in your family as friends as well like there can be both uh, i know you can't choose family but in my instance i do get on with all my family so i'm quite uh, lucky in that respect and of course all, they all live um in west cumbria apart from my sister my brother my sister's in newcastle it's in gated i should say rather newcastle so she's literally just up the road my brother's in liverpool i've just been there yesterday um it's not that far to get to so i've it is quite uh quite a good thing uh that i've got the mix um there and um yeah and uh i can sometimes go a week and not see any of my friends and it doesn't bother me at all because i'm occupied uh, doing other things uh, i've got my own hobbies as well like the photography uh, i can go and do on my own in the evening i'm very happy to do that and then see what photos are good and make a story out of it uh the cycling and the running same again i can do that on my own i've said about the concert uh put quiz in the game of pool that's when you need friends of course that's a yeah. it's a bit, a bit of a sad time you can't but mm -hmm. uh it's definitely two sides of it it's definitely you've got the people it's good that the ones are close you can do both with the ones who you can like share stuff with in confidence but then also the ones who you can have fun doing stuff out of work um especially now i was saying before uh with the business uh, i'm getting a better work-life balance and yeah. well, and definitely focus more on that side of things yeah because when you talk about work-life balance it, it must be a quite recent thing for you is it uh, I, I don't know. I'm just like I'm. It's just my assumption because mm -hmm. uh, starting think, a new business and mm -hmm. getting customers, it's, and then like it's the, at the beginning, everything's quite hard. I wouldn't say like hard. It's time consuming. You have to invest loads of time. Mm -hmm. In that way, you overwork in like the first few years, possibly, and then now like everything's kind of uh, coming how you want. 
and then now you're thinking about work-life balance and oh definitely because if i um look at when i first came full time the always the scare is trying to get any sort of work and mm -hmm. especially you're getting a reputation out there you're trying to get work and i was lucky that i actually got quite a lot uh, quite early on that just meant that i was quite busy early on as well uh, it's only just i would say now that it's a nice a uh, nice amount coming in to the point where it was really busy i would say from when i first started till about january then it went quiet from about january till march last year then it got really busy again from april till about september october and then it wasn't too bad during november and december a lot of little stuff that kept me ticking away and then i had about a quiet period just after christmas for about two weeks and then i remember i think it was the monday the second monday in january i think it was about the 15th or something um suddenly it just got really busy again it's only just got quite nice now um so if that sort of thing is being able to keep up with the momentum now i know i can get work uh, it's a case of how effective can i be with it and what can i put in place mm -hmm. to make the business more efficient so then be able to like i've just said to you before um to enjoy uh, the work-life balance and uh, one thing that I've been doing which is definitely helping is on Fridays unless I know there's something urgent I focus more on in-house stuff organization accounts uh, my own training that sort of stuff and that works really well knowing that eases the week nicely uh, mm -hmm. I don't I don't work weekends anymore I don't do all-nighters uh, when I first started the business I would work a lot of weekends I was uh, if you speak to anyone uh who knows me in the industry they know that i used to do some silly hours now mm -hmm. it seems to be uh i tend to focus more afternoon and evenings and in the mornings uh to you there for a buffer if something comes in urgently i enjoy my own time in the morning or if i have to work late for any reason uh it's given me a chance to have a line uh, mm -hmm. so that's why i don't unless i have to i don't tend to plan uh, mornings anymore mm -hmm. So are you a morning person or evening person? Oh, definitely an evening person, especially uh -huh. this time of year. However, when I know the weather's nice in the summer, I'm quite good at getting up in the morning knowing mm -hmm. uh, if I finish earlier, I can enjoy uh, the like when it's the long summer nights, I can enjoy them more. In the winter, it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. Uh, at least I can enjoy some of the natural sunlight uh, like in the, in the late morning and then I'll come into work um, at some point in the afternoon. Um, and then focus on a development task uh, during the afternoon or in the early evening. Mm -hmm. So how, because you're doing lots of social media stuff, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, how how hard is it? Or is it because you use, you do it all the time. That's. It is. Uh, like one thing I do, I plan my social media. So if there's anything uh -huh. to do, with uh, the business, I tend to do it Monday to Thursday and in the working hours. If it's more mm -hmm. stuff about my personal life, I tend to do that more on a weekend. So when it comes to like the business, social media, that's LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Twitter and Facebook. If it's more personal, it tends to be more just Facebook and Instagram. And um, at the, that, it's one of the things where I'll schedule and I'll try and do like two or three posts a week. Um, and that works because I'm not overdoing it and i've normally used the same post across all four channels and maybe just tweet change it a little bit um that sort of stuff i know social media now uh, i do a lot less than i used to but mm -hmm. i'm more in a better pattern now because i know in the week kind of what i want to talk about yeah it's interesting so if you think since you started the services you're offering probably evolved a lot mm -hmm. yeah so well, what What's the future? What's the view futures looking like? Right. So in the in the future, the idea is by end of this year uh, that um, there's more like I, the the company's quite profitable. I'm working uh, like less hours to what I am now, uh, and a case of looking to then get a team on board. So that's like very short term, more for the business. Uh, going into the next few years, uh, we've got. Uh, a lot of uh, friends 30th birthday is coming up so it seems to be from september onwards uh I've it's kind of planned for me the next uh, couple of years the little trips away uh which is great i don't have to think about much um 
And then when, after our term 30, the idea is, is to, uh, by that point, I should have a few years self-employed under my belt, uh, start looking for a uh, a nice nice house, uh, like a little bit more on the outskirts of Newcastle. Uh, I was saying to you before that my car is 17 years old and it does run very well for the age of it, but I know mm-hmm. that I will have to get a better car at some point in the future. So a uh, very short-term objective is to be able to make more than I spend. Uh, looking more long-term, is, uh, especially in my 30s, is looking at the house and the car, but then also travel further afield. Uh, going back to what I was saying about the country music, uh, Nashville uh, in Texas is definitely somewhere I wouldn't mind going to. Uh, yeah. I, I priced it up roughly, so I know what the cost is going to be. Um, and I know I would have to do some saving up that year, of course. Uh, Canada's also been on my mind as well, um, and Australia's been on my mind. So it's more looking at uh, being able to have the time and the money to be able to travel further, fill them for a longer period. Because mm-hmm. this year it's been a lot of short trips, and normally across a weekend, uh, where I've never been away Monday or Friday. Uh, I want to be able to say, right, I can go away for a full week and be able to put the business in capable of hands while I'm away. Oh, right. That's the reason. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely, it's definitely uh, I want to be able to enjoy. When I go yeah. somewhere, now, I've made the effort and paid the okay. money to go somewhere. I want to fully enjoy it uh, mm-hmm. and enjoy the moment. Mm-hmm. And that's, and that's kind of why uh, I enjoy my concerts, because the normally the on an evening, uh, I'm enjoying the music. I've made the effort to go there. I've paid for the concert. I've traveled down to see them, uh, if especially I've, I've traveled. Uh, but I'm enjoying the good few hours that I'm there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lift the mood. I'm not con- concentrating on anything else. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying that moment. And then normally afterwards, uh, get to speak to a few of the pe- few of the band members afterwards, or uh, if friends have came with me, with them normally enjoy the weekend and uh, maybe uh, visited a, new, a few bars afterwards uh, after mm-hmm. after the concert. Right. So. Um... Because you are into country music, do you sing? I don't. And if I do try and sing, people run away. Uh, even uh, I have an experience at the karaoke bar where they put a sign up uh, saying, um, like, go away. So, like, uh, P-I-S <laughs> off uh, because the singer's that bad. Uh, you speak to any of my friends, they know my singer's not great. Oh, really? Don't get me wrong, I like singing in the shower. It's that's a mic my kind of club. <laughs> oh yeah, it is it is a good laugh in there. Um, yeah. but uh, uh singing is not one of my best talents, but I don't mind singing in the car in the shower. I think uh, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. I usually ask a few like random questions at the end of this like impossible conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would ask, what's your favorite zoo animal? Ooh. It's something I've not really thought about. I think I'm going to go to a monkey just for the simple fact. The first thing I've just thought of then, uh, yeah. and I know it's like so. I think like quite a noisy uh, animal, but and uh, quite lively. And I think that's what I can be like. Um, I think the second one would be uh, would be tiger, just for the simple fact. Uh, one, I've got a tiger onesie, so people have seen that when I've been to fancy dress <laughs> parties. But it's also well, where it's like uh, just sort of like being able. Uh, to uh, like one of the bigger animals. Um, I never really thought of lion, but it's uh, just one of them other animals that I thought of then. <laughs> Fantastic one, will do, yeah. What's the tallest building you've been to the top in? The coolest building. Tallest. The tallest building. Uh, I, the tallest, yeah. I think it would be the Empire State Building in New York. Uh, uh-huh. I, went, I went over there. Uh, It'll have been in 2010, uh, so before I moved to Newcastle, and uh, 10 of us uh, went with school and we managed to go in there. Oh, well. And what's the longest you've gone without sleep and why? 36 hours, easily. And that's, uh, it's been a case where I've either been, run, I've been at an event, running an event, and then I've had to then do something afterwards. Uh, I remember, Back at school, it was about that because uh, I was a part of this group called Rock Challenge, uh, doing a technical for them. And it used to be, it was the case that I had some, um, I had some coursework to do for school, and then uh-huh. go to that event, which was at Grimsby, do the event, and then come back. So I think, like I said, I think it usually was a day and a half, um, 
I think I've even, even in the self-employed life, I have done 24, hour 25, 26. I've not gone past just over 24. And But even then, that was when I first went full-time. That hasn't happened for quite a while now. Uh-huh. It's very interesting. So the last question, what's the worst gift you have received? Oh. That's just like a I, think I, know, I think yeah. the worst worst one. Yeah. What could that be? I, just, I tried to I tried to think. Oh you could go to the best one. It is one of those things. Um uh, it is quite a hard one. Uh, I think of the best or worst. Uh I think uh, if we go to the worst is where someone thought I've enjoyed something like chocolate say and I don't like mint or orange chocolate and I've received them as a gift so I've, I've ended up giving them to someone else. So <laughs> I think we'll go down after the worst. Um, yeah. I, think the, I think the best gift I've been given, I mean, anything that's been like put some thought into it. So um, I think it's been a case of if it's been like, I remember uh, for my 18th birthday, uh, I was given some uh, rock concert tickets. Uh, it's the first time I've ever been to the uh, Auto Academy, or at the time it would have been the Carlin Academy. So that's, we're going back a while now. And getting there, I was just excited to just go to my first concert. Uh, because before that, I've only really been to very small like uh, bands, uh, like where they've been at the back of a pub, handful of people. But to travel, like someone who's from uh, countryside, who know like the biggest city is Newcastle. Carlisle isn't that big. To travel like nearly two hours to come and see something just felt more uh, special than just seeing something in the area. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So oh, even yeah. so, yeah, I remember uh -huh. that for my 18th birthday now. So uh -huh. yeah, because that's that's the in the corner of where the Tusk Park and everything is, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, that's and place, yeah, because I remember that place being cinema or some bingo place very very think, long time ago. Probably you wouldn't remember because you I'm, were just. I know further along the road back to the Time Theatre, which is also yeah. on the same junction as the Auto Academy. And uh, that used to be the Stoll uh, Picture House. So that used to be a cinema a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, and I know you've had other cinemas across Newcastle in the past. You've had one where the stack is now, uh, where Northumber University Business School, that was Warner Bros. at one point. Uh, so, uh, you've had a, like a handful of cinemas in the city over the years. Yeah. I remember that there was a like Odeon opposite the Tyneside Cinema as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was a very, very long time ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's the one I was thinking of. It's where Stack's at now. Um, oh, yeah, uh, that's where Stack is, isn't it? Yeah, so. Yeah. This is, oh, uh, well. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining me in our impossible conversation. No worries. Uh, thank you very much what would you say in like as a person do you know what i've achieved that i'm proud of this and i am possible uh it's a case of uh over especially the last five years uh, since uh like the time mm -hmm. i finished uni it's a case of uh back to the quote that i've saying uh you can't be everyone's tea cup of tea otherwise you'll be a mug but then the other thing as well is be able to be independent to then do what you want without having someone with you uh, and the amount of travel that i've done on my own i've been to concert on my own i'm willing to do stuff on my own uh, this business idea this is also on my own as well uh photography uh it's a case of if you want to do something don't let uh, other people stop you and that also means if you're if you need to like have someone with you don't do that either, because that still falls in that same category. Uh, go off your own accord. Be brave to do stuff on your own. Yeah. So you picked what you want to do, and you're doing it. That's mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. Yeah, and uh, and the one thing I like about uh, doing what I do now is I can do the best quality of stuff uh, when it suits best. Um, I'm not working nine till five anymore. Uh, I feel that, right, I can even, like today, as I was saying to you earlier on, I've worked uh, all day today. I've worked uh, from 12 o'clock. I'm still here now uh, talking to you. I've got a couple of things to finish. I don't mind having a long day on a Monday and get a load of stuff done. I'll work on a train in Man uh, going to Manchester and back tomorrow, uh, and I'll work 
uh, Wednesday and Thursday as well. Friday, I kind of have a bit of a shorter day, but uh, with my sister's wedding on Saturday, I'll be getting ready for stuff ready for that. So ideally, I'm trying to do four four days this week, but keep them long. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so you're choosing what you want to do and you're doing it. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I'm def definitely. And uh, definitely focus on uh, between now and 30 years, do more stuff that you enjoy doing. Uh, mm -hmm. because this is about uh, us as people rather than what we do uh, for a living. Exactly. Okay. Thanks very much for your time. And I absolutely enjoyed chatting with you. And yeah, thank you very much. Story. Yes. And, and I'll, we'll I'll... catch up with you later, hopefully. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Yeah. Okie doke. Right. Thank you for everyone watching and bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Oh.